Good morning, everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about sports. Specifically, sports while you're in college. If you're even remotely interested in doing anything athletic while well in college, there's going to be something for you no matter what skill level you are at. There are several different tiers of college athletics. So first of all, you have the NCAA levels, and that's divisions 1, 2, and 3. You also then have club level, intramural level, and then just kind of your own personal whatever sport level. So first, let's talk about the NCAA and the differences between Division 1, Division 2, and Division 3 sports. Each division has some unique traits and characteristics that really define how it is different from each of the other two divisions. The first big difference is the level of competitiveness. So your Division 1 sports are going to be your most competitive schools. So these are going to be schools that have really big name sports teams, such as Penn State, Temple, or any other Division I school. If you're a big football fan, you'll see these schools in the SEC or the Big Ten or other big conferences like that. However, that's not to say that the other two divisions aren't competitive either. Both Division II and Division III are still very competitive in terms of their athletics. It's just not as competitive as the division ahead of it. The second big difference is in terms of athletic scholarships. For Division I and Division II schools, there is the possibility of you receiving athletic scholarships. It is not a guarantee that you're going to receive a scholarship, but there is the option for it. Division I schools are able to give out full-ride scholarships. Division II schools, however, can only give out partial scholarships. If you are interested in Division III school, they are not allowed to give out athletic scholarships to their students. Your best chance of getting a scholarship for athletics is to go to either a Division I or a Division II school. However, know that it is not guaranteed for you to get a scholarship, and not everyone is going to get one. Another difference between these divisions is the recruiting timeline. And this is in reference to when a coach can get in contact with you, or even when you can get in contact with a coach. It does vary from sport to sport and across different divisions how the recruitment process works. If you want to know more about how the recruitment schedule works, go to ncaa.org and you can look up the student recruitment calendar and it will tell you when coaches are allowed to get in contact with you depending on the sport or the division that you are looking to get into. The last major difference between the divisions really comes down to eligibility and this refers to your academics and standardized test scores. So for Division 1, you have to have at least a 2.3 GPA overall in high school, and then you are required to submit your SAT and ACT scores. For Division 2, you have to have at least a 2.0 GPA, and again, these test scores are required. However, the important thing to note here is that both Division 1 and Division 2 operate on a sliding scale. So depending on where your GPA or your SAT scores fall, it will impact basically how your scores are interpreted. So if you have a high GPA but a low SAT score, you will still be okay because it evens out on this sliding scale. And if you have a high SAT score and a lower GPA, it can still kind of even out the same way. So as long as one of them is at the range it needs to be, you should be okay in terms of getting into the athletic programs. Divisions 1 and 2 do require you to register yourself on the Eligibility Center, which there's a link down below for that. And for Division 3, you are not required to enroll yourself on the Eligibility Center. The academic requirements for Division 3 schools also are different from Division 1 and 2. There isn't certain academic criteria that's generalized across Division 3 schools. It is going to depend on each school on how they determine their admission standards. And once again, all the links that I've mentioned throughout this time period you'll be able to find down below. One specific website that's worth checking out is the Big Little High School NCAA information page. And if you go to this website, there's lots of great information that I've talked about here, and also links to all of these different pages that I've also talked about. And now that we've gone through the NCAA sports, I do want to talk about the different levels. So you have your club level sports, and these are athletics that aren't quite as competitive as your Division 1, 2, and 3 sports, but they are still very competitive in terms of they do go out and compete against other colleges or universities. A really popular club level sport is rugby, but there are also club level soccer, flag football, or any other club level really you can think of. It's a great way for you to still be involved in athletics without having to have the same time commitment as a major division level team. Your intramural sports will be purely within the school itself. So this is you playing against a team of other students from your school. And you can really create these teams up from all of your friends or people you know or even people you don't really know. The benefit of the intramurals is that it is much less of a time commitment than any other level of sport because you really 
just have to show up for the games. There aren't any specific practices unless your team is super intense. Almost every school you go to will have some sort of tournament for these intramural teams, and almost everyone will agree it's all about winning the shirt. And lastly, there's the athletics that's on your own terms. So basically, this could be you just playing whatever with your friends, or it could mean you going to the gym, going to various aerobics or athletic classes that you can take at your school, or really just any sort of way of staying active. You may recall over the summer I did a video about how to stay healthy in college, and a really great way for you to stay healthy and kind of have your own fun little athletic time is to go climbing on rock walls, which you can see what I did here. Speaking of rock walls, you're probably never going to believe how high up I am on a rock wall right now. Just kidding. I'm still on the ground. Don't mean to brag, but I'm kind of a big deal on rock walls. So hopefully this has been helpful for you to get more information about NCAA or any other athletics in college, and it can give you a better idea on if you do want to play some sports while you're in college. If you have any questions about playing sports in college, feel free to get in touch with me at the PA goes to college at gmail.com, and I will be happy to answer any questions you have. All right, everyone, I'll see you next week.